Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share my first update on my experience with the HP Omen 17 for 2021. Now this specific build, for those of you that caught my unboxing, has an Intel 11th Gen Core i9 8-core processor. It's the 11900H. We've got an NVIDIA RTX 3070 with 140 watts of power, thanks to the gigantic 330-watt power supply, and of course, the overall uh, size of this machine, which is beastastic, no question about it. We've got a 17.3-inch uh, QHD 165 hertz IPS panel that is color accurate. We have Wi-Fi 6E, 16 gigs of RAM in my unboxing. I thought I had gotten 32, at least that's what the original order was supposed to be. But upon testing this out, unfortunately only 16, but that is easily upgraded uh, on the user end. So if you're looking to upgrade, pretty simple. You don't have to have that uh, pre-built by HP, nothing soldered. And then we've got a one terabyte Samsung uh, NVMe Gen 4, it's the 980 Pro, which is certainly a nice drive to have already installed. No reason to upgrade unless you need more capacity, which you can easily accomplish with the additional NVMe uh, slot. So, how does this machine stack up? Well, you can see I'm running TimeSpy right now. I think the display is fantastic. Overall build quality is great. Uh, the mechanical keyboard with optical switch is really nice. Uh, the four zone RGB lighting, if you're after it, is there. I personally just need good backlighting and that's enough. No numerical keypad, but again, that's really a matter of personal preference. Uh, but overall, I am really impressed with this machine. Now, the original build with the 32 gigs of RAM that I thought I was going to receive was supposed to be spec'd out at a little under uh, 2,300 US dollars. This is gonna be closer with the 16 gigs of RAM to about two grand and maybe even less. Uh, it's not currently available on HP's website, but I'm sure it will be coming back right now. Uh, you can purchase this through Best Buy. I may include a link in the description, but it is not going to be as beefy a build as you're looking at here that I am demoing. So do I think the Omen 17 for 2021 is a worthwhile gaming option? Well, that's kind of interesting that that timed at the same time as I said that. The answer is absolutely. Now, I do have the fans on max right now, so if you're wondering why it's so loud, you have your reason. But look at that performance. I mean, over 11,000 on Time Spy, and trust me, it does translate. I've played a little Cyberpunk, a little Rust, a little Call of Duty uh, World War II multiplayer. Frame rates have been really solid. Uh, let me go ahead and actually take you into the Omen uh, software just so we can turn the fans down because we don't need them cranked up anymore. It was really just to give you uh, that sample of performance. Here you can see all the monitoring, which should kick on any second. There you have it. Again, disappointed I didn't get the 32 gigs of RAM, but 16 is adequate. Um, if you're going to do 4K video editing uh, and you know any high res, I would say raw image editing inside of Lightroom, Photoshop, then uh, to me, I would absolutely go with 32 gigs of RAM. After all, this is a desktop replacement without any hesitation, uh, basically, a workstation even though it's a gaming laptop but just to show you I do have this machine under volted and that is a nice thing uh, that HP includes I like it it's simple um, you know sometimes it's hit or miss with their desktops it's not under volting it's overclocking of course uh, but this seems to be smoother than the process that I got out of uh, their desktop machines You've got your network booster your lighting now uh, as I mentioned, you can play with the zones. I'm not going to really get into that today. Uh, the performance control, you can see I have it on performance mode. We have the fan set to max. I'm going to go ahead and take that down to auto, and instantly you're going to hear that you know, fan noise cut. And thermals here are really good. I mean, I've gamed with this on my lap, which I never recommend. It's not a good idea. God knows we all do it occasionally. And surprisingly enough... This thing didn't get hot at all. So that's thanks in large part to the two gigantic fans that are cooling it. Uh, so, so far it seems like thermals are really solid and fan noise when you're in the auto mode, like right now, you can hear them, they're whirling a little bit, but it's fairly silent. So again, it looks like HP on this redesign 
of the Omen 17, just like the 15, they did a really good job. It's not perfect, but really good. Uh, you also, of course, have the graphic switcher. You could jump between hybrid and discrete if you know you're going to be gaming or doing, again, 4K uh, video editing. Again, raw image editing. Stick to discrete if you're doing mixed. Then you can, of course, go with hybrid. You're still going to leverage the 3070, but if you want the most out of this machine, go with discrete. Now, another thing I really like about this laptop, uh, you've got macros because we do have you know, the six programmable buttons right here, uh, but that's not what I was getting to. It's having Thunderbolt on board, and uh, between this GPU, overall performance CPU pairing, again, this is the i9, so uh, if you went uh, the step below with the i7, it's still going to perform incredibly well. You don't need to have the i9, but this is the top spec build. You're getting amazing performance, but then the 980 Pro, the SAMI NVMe drive, you can see those read-write speeds, and this is the benefit of having Intel inside, uh, quite literally, is that you do have Gen 4 capability uh, with your NVMe drives, which, you know, I don't know how much of it is necessarily tangible, but there is definitely a considerable performance improvement. And yeah, Gen 5 may be around the corner, uh, but it's just nice to have much faster storage capacity or capability in the event you actually plan to use it. Uh, especially when it comes to, again, Thunderbolt, being able to, you know, bring in this dual uh, Sabrent Thunderbolt enclosure and drop pretty much any capacity uh, drives I want in here. And you can run them in RAID, you can run them individually, however you want. But the fact that I can get that gig and a half throughput because of, again, uh, the Thunderbolt uh, capability on this machine is another thing I really miss when using my Asus G15. And for those of you that are wondering, the benchmark here at a little over 11,000, the G15 right now, same drivers of course, but with that Max Q3070, you're looking at more around a little under 9,000 in Time Spy. And it's tangible. I mean, in Cyberpunk, inside Night City, uh, running anything that's really graphic intensive, you're going to get anywhere from 40 to 60 frames on this machine, but the average will be somewhere in the 50s. With the G15, because of the Max Q, shave 10 to 15 frames off of it. So there is definitely something to be said for the additional power, and I love the display on this machine. You know, it's not perfect, there's a little bit of backlight bleed, but color accuracy is excellent. It's really bright compared to my G15, which I know doesn't set any records. A little under 400 nits here, roughly, um, and color accuracy seems to be really good. I haven't done any formal uh, testing, but it's a clear difference from my G15. So that tells you something, because part of the beauty of the G15 was its color accuracy, uh, not its brightness, and of course the fact that it's QHD. So, last thing I want to do is just jump over to YouTube, and I'll just search this. Now, of course, this doesn't support uh, HDR, and eventually, let's hope that we get G-Sync support out of this. But let's just take a look um, at some content here, so you can see what 4K looks like. Granted, it's not a 4K display, but this will still give you an idea of the chops of the IPS panel, which is a matte finish. Again, I've been really impressed with it. I think that HP, once this becomes available, I think this is going to be a dream machine for a lot of you out there, and that's just because it performs really well. So let's go ahead and play this. Let's get the volume going. This is at 100%. Um, audio is also, uh, excuse me, brightness is also at 100%. In fact, I may have to crank it down a little bit. And, you know, I will, because it's a little blown out. I think that looks better. Not to my eyes, but at least to what you're seeing. Contrast looks uh, a little more on point. So again, photo, video editing, gaming, everything is going to be a cinch with this machine, at least what I've experienced so far. Um, it is large. It is, uh, of course, fairly heavy, especially when you take into account the power brick, which again is 
like a record size. I'm going to see if I can even bring it into frame. I don't know that I actually can. Let's see. I don't think the run, it's not long enough, but I can uh, disconnect it because we don't need that anymore. We've run our benchmarks. And by the way, I've run those benchmarks already. I just wanted to straighten that out so that everyone could see it live. And there is that brick, which is tremendous. Again, um, for scale purposes, um, this is the dual NVMe drive, as you already know. And if I go ahead and take a Sony a7R IV, <laughs> you start to get the idea of how big this brick really is. But it is a 330 watt supply. So, I mean, it's no wonder. It's not like it's a surprise. And don't worry, the plastic will come off. But this literally just arrived yesterday. So I've just been putting it through you know, the paces and it's impressive. Now for some audio, I'm gonna just, uh, let's jump over to my channel and let's just see what we're cooking with. And the keyboard uh, touchpad, both are really nice. Um, there's the unboxing, why don't we just go to that? Volume again is at 100%. Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick unboxing first look at the HP Omen 17 for 2021. Now this was ordered for me by my HP rep back in... Skip the ahead. Very similar to, if not identical, to what a little bit more. would have called that with that 330 watt brick. I mean... And there are the ports. This is actually a good time to pause. Um, again, you have pretty much all the I.O. you could want. The full-size SD card slot, I love it. You follow my channel, you already knew that without me having to even tell you. Uh, and then in addition to that, the Thunderbolt. No power delivery there. You cannot charge uh, over that Thunderbolt port. This is something that I hope in the future HP decides to alter because that would be a great benefit. Even if you don't have this giant brick and you won't be able to get obviously full leverage of the system, it still would be nice to have the ability to travel without it and just bring, you know, a compact 65 watt type C charger and be able to power it through this. Another disadvantage of not having power delivery there is that when you hook up to Thunderbolt docks, it does present a problem with waking up the system. Um, if, the, you know, if the system is closed, you're not gonna be able to wake it up when it's actually closed. So if you plan on docking this, again, in a closed capacity, this is part of the rub I experienced with the Aero 15. As much as I love that machine, that was a letdown when it came to the Thunderbolt connectivity. So something food for thought for HP, uh, but this seems like it's as good as it gets right now in terms of a 17.3 inch modern gaming laptop that is a true desktop replacement. I think the design language is really good. The I.O. is also excellent between having HDMI and DisplayPort uh, out in dedicated uh, capacity. That full-size card reader, of course, Ethernet, uh, the array of USB uh, connectivity, it has it all. Uh, the 17.3 inch display is excellent, keyboard is excellent, but if you follow my channel, you already know I'm a big fan of what HP generally does with keyboards. I think they could squeeze a numerical you know, keypad on here, but I don't know that that many gamers care about that. So I think that's part of the reason, obviously, that it isn't there. Uh, but this is just so far really nice. The one Achilles, as you may have already guessed it, is battery life. And I haven't used it enough to give you a firm fix on what we're seeing, but it's not a lot. So plan to keep this plugged in. That's another reason I would have liked, I think we all would have liked to just have that option of power delivery using that type C port, the Thunderbolt port, because at the very least, you know, in the event you're not trying to game, you're not trying to render four or 8K video, or again, edit photos, you know, large raw files, just for browsing content consumption, it would be nice to have a light way uh, to keep this charged up because realistically, even if you switch the performance mode uh, and the GPU mode uh, to hybrid, battery life does not seem to be its strong suit. But again, we didn't expect that, did we? This is a 17.3 inch gaming laptop that gives you workstation type performance. But go ahead and take a listen again. The speakers are fine. You know, they're, they're better than most machines, but again, you know, laptop speakers are laptop speakers. There are very few that are fantastic. In the future, hopefully this becomes more of an option. You know, Lenovo has left that door open on their builds that I've been covering. Uh, HDMI 2.0. Pump up the brightness. Port, another type A port. And then last but not least, uh, Ethernet and the power adapter port. So pretty nice machine. Uh, again, looks just like the Omen 15. So if you're into that, you're going to be into this one. 
but let's see now. For those of you wondering about the single hand open, I don't think I'm going to have a problem because the Omen 15... And by the way, the single hand does work, uh, but basically what I've experienced is it's a matter of how you do it. So on my first open, I didn't get it, and you shouldn't have to practice, right? I mean, that's obvious, but overall, again, this machine seems excellent, and if you're after this experience, which really reminds me of basically an Intel reference gaming laptop, which is a good thing. I, I really prefer that over when manufacturers go out of their way to make things too flashy or too exotic looking. I like this clean, you know, black, almost carbon fiber look. Uh, we've got basically a full metal deck here. It stays cool. Yes, a fingerprint magnet. My palms aren't sweaty, but uh, it is going to get, you know, fairly dirty looking quickly. This is only day two, but I have been using it since uh, the unboxing. But overall, just a really solid laptop, it seems. And if you're looking for bleeding edge, again, I don't recommend the 3080. The price to performance difference generally isn't worth it. I know a lot of you will still go out and buy the 3080 just to have the highest spec. I get it. I respect it. But for everyone else who's looking to get the best performance for the money, I think that lives with the 3070 in every build, whether you're going max Q or, of course, full power like this machine. On the flip side, the 3060 is still a fantastic GPU in just about every build. I mean, the performance it delivers is just like everything in the 3000 series, absolutely worth it, in my opinion. And that's why, you know, there are so many models out there with 3060s that I think are worth every dollar. But when it comes to 17-inch gaming laptops, uh, HP, I think it's hit a home run. Now it's just, can they get this thing to market? Can they actually make it available so you can buy it? Uh, no privacy switch for the 720p webcam, by the way. And um, I, again, really like the keyboard. Uh, the backlighting, you know, it's a matter of whether or not you're really a fan of this stuff. I personally like to have traditional backlighting. Do I need four zone RGB? No. Is it good to have it and not need it? Yeah, why not? Um, if you're paying for it and you don't need it, that's where things become a little bit different. But overall, I think that HP has done an excellent job with this machine. Again, initial impressions. I'm going to spend more time with it. It's literally only been roughly two days. So give me some more time. More stuff is coming for those that are uh, those of you that are waiting. Uh, don't worry. A lot more uh, laptop reviews coming at you since um, I am better. For those of you that weren't aware, I was sick for a little while, uh, but now I'm back at it. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them, hit that like button, and as usual, please feel free to subscribe, and please stay safe. Later.